a moment, we'll be continuing in our uh, series on living faith in Jesus Christ, having a living faith in Jesus Christ. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, forgiving ourselves uh, this morning. And uh, based on Psalm 103, a number of other scriptures that I have for us to look at too. But uh, uh, yeah, just uh, would like to, to go before the Lord in prayer and, and uh, pray for our, our country and our world. Uh, as we live in a, a time in which uh, it's, it's always uh, uh, been, you know, uh, different times, different uh, seasons in, in the world, and yet... Uh, as we, uh, we listen to the times and things going on, uh, we know that we're drawing closer and closer to the time of Christ's return and uh, uh, know that uh, one day uh, he will return for his church, that's us, and uh, when he does, uh, uh, just a time of uh, tribulation will follow and uh, people need to be making their decisions for Christ now and not putting that off, and we know that, so uh, we want everyone to have a living faith in, in Christ, and uh, we want to uh, be sharing that with those around us. But uh, let's just uh, go before the Lord this morning, give thanks for the offering received, and and uh, we do have, uh, again, as uh, Tyler was telling us, uh, the Diaz's will be here on May 7th to share, and uh, they do their work down in Mexico, but uh, we want God's work to, uh, God's message to continue to go out uh, all around the world, and uh, we just know the the uh, the need, the desperation for people to uh, to be right with God and to be right with Christ. So let's go before the Lord in prayer, and then we'll uh, we'll share in the message. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to come together this morning and hear your word. We thank you for the singing that. Uh, those that uh, were in the in the worship team led us in and, and reminding us, Lord, that uh, we need you, that we want to worship you. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would be uh, just on our hearts and minds, that, that not just today on a Sunday, but that through the rest of this week, Lord, that we would think about uh, those that are around us that need to hear about you, uh, that we would have the opportunity, open opportunities to uh, share with people, to uh, just give uh, of our hearts and lives to people that we care about, that we know, maybe to strangers uh, that we don't know, that, uh, Lord, we will have the opportunity to, to tell people the good news, and uh, that we won't shy away from that. We look at the world as it is, Lord, and we know that you understand everything from beginning to end, and uh, we know that you see uh, the way the world is going and the way the world is moving, that uh, we draw closer and closer each day to uh, your return. And uh, one day you will uh, just uh, uh, be at that moment that you have prepared and uh, only known to you. And uh, But when that moment happens, Lord, uh, there won't be any turning back. There won't be any changing things. Uh, the, the, the day will be set. And... Uh, uh, people will have missed their opportunity, Lord, to have placed their faith in you, to uh, have repented of their sins, and to believe. And uh, so we, we pray that we will do our part, uh, Lord, to reach people. I thank you for uh, just our opportunities here in this church through missionaries, and, and I pray this often, but uh, through Sunday school, through the Awana program, it'll be coming to an end here uh, here in the next few weeks. And um, uh, Lord, we know that uh, uh, that good news doesn't stop going out, but that we want uh, our kids to understand it, we want adults to understand it, and uh, we want to uh, have the opportunity to share it. So uh, give us divine appointments. Give us opportunities to uh, tell people that good news and uh, that you love them and that you died for them on the cross. And uh, so we thank you for this church and for all the ways in which you guide and direct us. We pray that you will uh, continue to be with churches in our community and other churches across the country and around the world, Lord, that are, that are sharing the same message. And uh, Lord, that you would send renewal and revival, that we would see uh, our need for you. And uh, we thank you again for this morning, for time together in your word. And uh, I pray that uh, uh, we will just uh, have good opportunity to be able to say, it's been good to have been in the house of the Lord today. 
even as we go out into another week. So thank you, Lord, for the rain that we received, and uh, we know how uh, vital that is, how important it is for, for the earth, for farmers who will soon be putting crops into the field, and uh, we pray for continued rain and uh, the opportunity, uh, Lord, again, for the earth to, uh, to receive what it needs to produce uh, uh, the crops that, that we look forward to in the fall. So thank you again for this day, and bless each one that's here this morning, and uh, we pray that again we will uh, just uh, listen to your word and have our hearts open. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning uh, we'll be uh, talking uh, about uh, something that I, uh, I uh, is, uh, just kind of making our way alphabetically through a number of topics this year and uh, that living faith in Jesus Christ and we talked about faith and faithfulness and then I uh, was thinking about forgiveness and it's going to talk about forgiving others and then uh, before I really got there I thought well maybe something that we need to think about for ourselves is about is, is forgiving ourselves, and, and it's one of those things about, well, do we really forgive ourselves or not? And, and yet the more, that I, the more that I read in Scripture and thought about those things, I think from the right perspective, yes, we're called to, to have um, an understanding of how Christ forgives us and uh, that uh, sometimes uh, we need to uh, have forgiveness uh, uh, through his word and understanding that we can be forgiven. And uh, I think people can struggle with that. They can have a view that, that uh, others can be forgiven, but maybe they cannot. And uh, I want each one of us here this morning to, to have a real understanding that, that there is forgiveness for each one of us. And, and Christ wants us to understand that you can be forgiven because uh, sometimes we hang on to things and we think, no, I, I, I've done things that are, so wicked or so bad and so sinful uh, that how could, how could Jesus ever forgive me? And so therefore we don't allow ourselves uh, to be forgiven and uh, for things that, that we have done. And we need to remember that we are forgiven completely. And I uh, want you to, to see that for yourself this morning. And uh, so I'd like to read in Psalm 103, and uh, it's, a, it's a favorite psalm of mine. I have it marked up in my Bible that uh, uh, it's uh, just a beautiful psalm and talks to us about praising the Lord with all of our hearts is how it begins. And uh, the psalmist says, praise the Lord. It's a psalm of David. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And one of the things that I like about Psalm 103 is actually in the Hebrew language there, in the very beginning of that psalm, uh, David understood, forget not all his benefits. There is a real idea there, to not forget one of his benefits. To not forget any benefits that God has given to us. And what's the greatest benefit that he's given to us? It's his forgiveness. And so as David wrote that psalm, uh, it says a great deal to us, and I want to read uh, starting in verse 10, as we can't cover the whole, uh, whole uh, psalm and talk about it, but at verses 10 through 14, I want you to follow along, and you have those uh, words of, uh, in your, either in your Bible, that you can look up, uh, or in your phone, or uh, you can uh, follow along with uh, me in the, in the notes that we have there inside our bulletin. Here's what David said. Here's what we have within the scripture. As David was talking about not forgetting God's benefits, not one of his benefits, that he is the one who forgives and redeems our life, it says. Then we get to verse 10, and it says, He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. 
He is mindful that we are but dust. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more, and its place acknowledges it no longer. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his precepts uh, to do them. And we'll ask God to bless his word here this morning as we uh, will look at a couple other passages of scripture here as well. And uh, uh, thinking about the very fact of what it means to forgive ourselves. There are things that you've done in life that no one else knows about. And for that, I think probably all of us would say, Phew, right? Kind of wipe the sweat from our brow and say, well, thankfully, no one knows that I ever did that. Even if we know we've been forgiven of something to think, you know what? No one will ever know, ever come to the light of day. I always think of it in uh, different ways, and it's illustrated in different ways in our life, uh, but uh, I have a little family illustration that, that always struck me so funny uh, that, uh, that came to light one time. Um, and I'll try to tell the story as quickly as I can, but uh, uh, there's a part to it that uh, just reminds us of beware, your sins will find you out. Uh, for those that have lived around here uh, a lot of their lives, uh, for many of us, uh, and I am not someone who likes a lot of change, and uh, I don't know if you'll remember, but I uh, grew up uh, where Brian and Tammy live uh, south of town on the farm, and, uh, but it used to be that uh, when you left, uh, left our farm to come to Spencer, and you would come into town, come into Spencer, uh, at about the time you get close to where Menards is, there used to be a curve in the highway. And I don't know how many of you remember that, but the highway curved as you rolled into Spencer. You didn't come to a four-way stop there by Menards and uh, by the, the carpet and flooring place. You, you curved around and you rolled right into Spencer. And uh, that's probably only been 40 years ago since they changed it. I was thinking about that. I still miss the curve, all right? That's how much I, uh, I don't like things to change. But as you'd roll into Spencer, you'd roll around that curve and, and right on to uh, and then where the mall was built and all of those kinds of things, and, and eventually Walmart and everything into, into Spencer. But, but now we had that, that, we had that four-way stop. Well, a number of years ago, uh, when, uh, when my mom was still living, and uh, was driving in, and I don't, I don't even know where we'd been, but anyway, came in, and uh, came to the four-way stop, and uh, I, instead of turning the corner uh, to go past the mall, uh, went straight. And um, I don't know what, what even the, the reason was for. It was just going to take that back way in, and you can come around and eventually come out by the uh, stoplight at the bridge. And uh, as I was doing that, uh, I just remembered that, uh, that uh, Mom had told me uh, that uh, and it had been, been a while ago that she had been stopped. She'd been pulled over because uh, if you uh, ever take that way, the speed limit goes kind of quickly goes from 35 down to 25. And uh, and mom had been picked up for uh, for speeding. And uh, and as we were just kind of cruising along in there, I don't I don't even know what made me say it, but I said, "Oh, here's where you got picked up that one time." And just as quick as could be, Mom said, who told you? <laughs> and I, I, it, it took me just a minute. And then I said, oh, did you get picked up again? <laughs> and then she's kind of like, oh. She said, I wasn't going to tell you and Brian. And she'd been picked up a second time for speeding through that area. And it struck me about things that we go through and when we 
need forgiveness and forgiving ourselves. Thinking about how God tells us in the scripture repeatedly, he has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor regarded nor rewarded us, excuse me, uh, according to our iniquities. There are things that we have all done that God does not hold against us. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards you, towards those who fear him. And as far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from God is a God of forgiveness. Next week, I'm going to talk about forgiving others. But you know, the more I studied it this week, even for myself, I thought we, we need to understand what it means to be forgiven for ourselves and even sometimes to forgive ourselves. To understand what our view of God should be so that we can very much like the Lord have a forgiveness for other people. And I want us to, if you will, look at a passage of scripture in Zephaniah in the Old Testament. If you have your Bibles open, or you can listen to me read that scripture, but in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. This is really to the Israelites, to the Jewish people. But a view of God, to understand that even in the Old Testament, sometimes we get the idea that, that God somehow is some great judge who is always bringing the hammer down on people. But you know something? I think sometimes we, we don't have the right view of God. God is a God of compassion. He is a God of forgiveness. He wants us to know that we are forgiven and we're forgiven through him. And I put a few bullet points there for us to think about this morning, what God is not and what he is. God is not a taskmaster. He is tender with us. In places like Zephaniah 3, 17, and even more of, of there through Zephaniah, but I don't have time to read all of that, but it says, the Lord your God is with you. He is a mighty warrior. God's a mighty warrior, but he is a God who saves. He will take great delight in you, and in his love he will no longer rebuke you, but re re will rejoice over you with singing. Don't have a view that God is always waiting to, to bring down and destroy you just the minute that you step out of line. No, it's his heart really that we would follow him, and that when we do fall short, that we would come back to him. That was always in the Old Testament, his message for his people. When they would wander away, he would give them opportunity over and over again to find his forgiveness, to find that, that he was a loving God who wanted them simply to be right with him. And it's not like God's an accountant and we just passed tax day on, on uh, April 18th. But he's lovingly devoted to us. He doesn't give up on us. He doesn't want to give up on us. And God isn't keeping a ledger, keeping track of all the things that you've ever done wrong. He wants to extend forgiveness to us. And I put there, even as that third bullet, he's not a performance-based God, meaning you don't get to be right with him because you have to be so perfect at a certain point uh, before he'll be pleased with you, but he's pleased and delighted with you in your life. You know why that is? Because he made you. He created you in his image. The Lord your God is with you. He told them in the Old Testament, a mighty warrior who saves. He takes great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. How great it is to know that God 
takes delight in us, and we need to view him that way. We need to understand him in that way. Now, if we continue to rebel against him, he might do what it takes to try to get our attention and bring him to bring us back to himself. But he would really much rather rescue us and forgive us, as he talks about in the passage in Psalm 103. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. I want you to think about it. Parents, you have compassion on your kids. When they do something wrong, you want to be able to forgive them. You want to be able to say to them, you know what, you're forgiven. And it's forgotten. And that's what a good parent does. A good parent might have to discipline their child for doing something that was wrong, maybe something that was sinful. But in the end, it's forgiven and forgotten. It should be. That's one of those lessons I think that we have to learn over and over again is that that we're not called even even in our in our being created in God's image to uh, to dig things back up over and over again. God is willing to forgive, and He's willing to forget. When we think about that for ourselves. I want to put that in your heart and mind this morning. That when God forgives, he forgives completely. And he is willing to forget as far as the east is from the west. He remembers our sin no more. How great that is. And so when you take something to him and you bring something to him and confess it and say, Lord, I've been sinful and I've been wrong." And I need forgiveness for it. To know how he forgives, I think we need to remind ourselves then, my sin is forgiven, and I don't have to continue to dig it up or to hang on to it or to somehow beat myself down with it, but to understand that I can be forgiven in God's eyes, I also can forgive myself. Because you see, life goes by quickly, and David said that there in Psalm 103. He said, for God knows our frame. He's mindful the word does. The man, his days are like grass. He's a flower of the field, he flourishes, but, but life goes by quickly. And there are some people that will live life, and they will live it over and over again in guilt of things that, that have been forgiven and I think that God wants us to understand, you know what? He doesn't, re he doesn't reward us according to our iniquities. He doesn't hold on to our sins. He's removed our transgressions from us. Like a father, he has compassion for us. He's forgiven us. So there too, you can forgive, you can, you can allow yourself to be forgiven. I think maybe that's a better way to say it. That you can allow yourself to be forgiven. And I think that it takes different ways to do that in our lives. Our view of God sometimes is that he is, he is um, all judge and nothing else. He is our judge. And he is holy and he is just. But he's also again that God of compassion and love. Those are the things that make up his virtues. And he tells us even within scripture that there are times in which maybe it's worth taking things that we've done and sharing those with, with those around us to, to know that we can uh, find, and uh, the second point that I have there this morning, to find a safe, understanding, compassionate friend to confess our sins too. His confession is a powerful way to make tangible God's forgiveness. 
I want you to go to James chapter 5, verse 16. And we are taught within the scripture, James says, Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Think about that for a moment and how James put those words together. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Know that we can take and we should have within the Christian family the ability to be able to go to someone and say, you know, there's there's something that I've struggled with. And to have them have a heart of compassion and say, you know what, you can be forgiven. They don't even have to have done the same thing or, or anything like that, but, but it's simply uh, uh, the ability to be able to come and to find compassion among people who, who understand what it is to need to be forgiven. We need to have that for each other. It's easy to, to have a harsh attitude and have a judgmental attitude, but, but that is not what God calls us to do. He calls us to be understanding, compassionate with each other so that we can pray for each other, it says, so that you may be healed. And I find it interesting then that James says the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. I take our confessing to one another. That's where renewal, revival come from. When you begin to hear about people say, you know what, I need to get right with the Lord. I need to, I need to confess this. It's been on my heart and mind. Something that maybe I've struggled with for a long time. And it's not just everybody that, that you need to go to. You don't need to go and tell everybody every sinful thing that you've ever done. God doesn't call us to do that. In fact, there are many things that we can take just directly to the Lord, and we know that. Jesus is our mediator. He is, he is the great high priest, and we don't have to take our sins to someone else to be forgiven. But yet there can be healthy things that we can do in which sometimes we just need to be able to go and say, you know what, uh, this has nothing to do with you. Um, you know, wasn't anything I did towards you, but I just, I just need someone to hear me, and I need to, I need to confess that I did something wrong, and I, and there's, I just need that encouragement to know that I'm forgiven. And finally, there this morning, in our notes, we need to be willing to change, to learn to live. In freedom, and there's all kinds of scripture that I was finding that tell us that, that remind us that, that we are forgiven and we have our freedom in Christ. And a very familiar one, of course, for us this morning that we know is Romans 8, verse 1, which says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you don't have that underlined in your Bible, you should. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He does not condemn you for things that he has forgiven you of. Because it goes on to say, as Paul goes on to say there in the, in the letter to the Romans, he says, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you what? He has set you free. Free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, that's in the Old Testament, to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And what Paul was really saying was because of what Jesus has done at the cross, we're not condemned. You are not condemned. You are forgiven. We want to release our guilt. 
we sometimes need to change our thinking. Because sometimes we hang on to things that we aren't called to hang on to. We're called to know that if God can forgive us, we can be forgiven. And sometimes we need a thorough cleansing of our thought processes. We need to clean up our thoughts and not condemn ourselves, but to know that we're forgiven. And you can truly be forgiven. I want you to believe that and to know that today. We need to break the bars of prison. Sometimes we hang on to things so long we forget what it really is to be free. And that's what Paul talks about to the Galatians in Galatians 5.1. In Galatians 5.1, you will read, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And that's my bullet point there of we need to break the bars of prison. Paul said, we don't have to be burdened by a yoke of slavery to be held down by things in the past. Know that you have Christ's forgiveness. It should allow you to live life freedom for him. And I want to give you five points, and they aren't, uh, I should have put them there in the notes, but I didn't... Uh, didn't take time to do that, but in forgiving yourself, I want you to write down if you got a place there on that piece of paper, if you're willing to do that for me. Um, remind yourself of forgiving yourself. Don't forgive, first of all, don't forgive too easily. And the reason I thought of that was that we need to be like Peter, who when he denied Jesus three times, even though he said he would not do that, he had remorse. We need to have remorse when we sin. We need to have a sense of, I've got to repent and be forgiven. To stop and to think about that we need to know that we need forgiveness. We don't need to be flippant about the very fact to think, oh, well, no big deal. Jesus died for my sin, and I deserve to be forgiven. No, you don't deserve it. But God offers it and gives it. So first of all, don't forgive too easily. Be reminded of all the stories in Scripture in which, even like David himself, and we've talked about it before, Psalm 51 for David had a real sense of remorse after he had sinned with Bathsheba. Second thing, though, is don't inflate the significance of your sin. Don't inflate the significance of your sin out of an attitude of sometimes I think it's almost a pride. Don't inflate the significance of your sin. Anything can be forgiven. Anything that you or I do can be forgiven. We just have to want to be forgiven. So don't somehow tell yourself, what I've done is far worse than anything that anyone else has ever done. I can't be forgiven. It's not true. Then you might be having a, a sense of pride in, in kind of a different way, but, but you might be... Um, Somehow saying, well, God can forgive everyone else, but he can't forgive me. No, no. He can forgive anything from anyone, so long as we want to be forgiven. Dare to believe Jesus' words. Dare to, G to believe that Jesus has forgiven others, he can forgive you. I think again, and I, I mentioned that just for a moment here, and with this uh, next uh, couple of uh, things that I want us to think about in forgiving ourselves, but think about all throughout Scripture, all the people that, that even Jesus, as he walked here on earth, he forgave again and again. I think about that little man 
we sing about in a Sunday school song, Zacchaeus. Crawled up in the sycamore tree to see Jesus. And when he, Jesus came along, he said, Zacchaeus, you come down from there, for I'm going to your house today. There was going to be forgiveness for Zacchaeus, a tax collector, a cheater, hated by people around him, but Zacchaeus had a change of heart. And he said, if I've cheated anybody, I will repay them four times more than what I took from them. His heart was changed. But he needed Jesus' forgiveness. I think about the woman at the well who came to the well in the middle of the day and she came there when other women would not be there. Why? Probably because of guilt. And when Jesus came, he told her all about her life. He said, you've had five husbands, and the man you're now living with is not even your husband. But you know, the scripture tells us that there was a change in her life because she went into the village, and people believed in Jesus because of what she had to say, because she went and she said, come meet the man who told me everything that I have ever done. And she found forgiveness. Think about that woman who was being drug out into the dust and the dirt. His men were standing over her with rocks, ready to stone her to death for her sin. And as she sat there in front of all of them in her guilt, Jesus confronted all of them and he said, let him who is without sin cast the first stone. And what do we know in that story? Boom. Boom. Those rocks got dropped. Those people walked away. And Jesus talked to her, caught in adultery. Yep, she had sinned. She had, she had definitely been caught in sin. But Jesus had her look around, and he was asking who had condemned her, and there was nobody left. And Jesus didn't condemn her either, but then he reminded her, he said, now go and sin no more. You think she had a change of heart? I'm sure she didn't. To stop and to think about the very fact that we can believe in a Savior who can forgive us. To think about that we can live as one forgiven. I tell you this morning, I want you to think about living your life as one who is forgiven. Take that with you today. Know that you have been forgiven as far as the east is from the west. One of my favorite, uh, uh, I've used her over and over in the last few weeks, but uh, people that... Uh, have given good illustrations through the years. Corey Tenboom one time said about this passage. She said, you know what I think we can picture as far as the east is from the west and that God has tossed our sins into the deepest sea. And then he puts up a sign, she says, in my mind, and he says, no fishing allowed meaning you can't go back there and pull it back up. Don't pull back up things that have been forgiven. They've been washed away. They've been taken care of. And yet she told in, in her life one time that she had some people that she had had a disagreement with, kind of a strong disagreement. And she thought they were wrong, and she thought they, uh, they thought she was wrong. And she told someone that was writing one of the books that got written about her life, she says, it's no problem. It's all forgiven. It's all forgotten. And as they were talking to her, they said, oh, yeah, is that right? And, and she says, oh, I can show you the letters that were written. 
about this situation. And the people said, well, so then you really haven't forgiven. And she thought about that for a moment. And she thought about her own need for forgiveness. And she said she went and she got those letters and she burned them. She threw them away. She thought about the very fact that she'd been forgiven completely of her sins. And that leads us into next week where we'll talk about forgiving other people. Like we have been forgiven. But I want you to go out today knowing you've been forgiven completely in every way. God loves you. He doesn't hang on to those things that you've done that are wrong. He doesn't ask you to hang on to those things. Go out in a sense of forgiveness and what he did at the cross was complete. And what a great feeling that is to live in his freedom. To live and to be free from our sin, our guilt. Let's pray. Lord, as we close this morning, we thank you for time together in your word and, and uh, I thank you for uh, patience of of these dear people that have listened to uh, the message that I've given this morning. But, but I pray that you will help each one to recognize that, Lord, individually we bring things to you, we are forgiven. We don't have to hang on to things that we have done. And, Lord, I pray that uh, you will give us a great sense of freedom as we go out into a new week. And, Lord, thank you for loving us and removing our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.